In the previous several lectures, we discussed RC circuits. Now, let's actually summarize our results. So, let's begin by defining what an RC circuit is. An RC circuit is an electric circuit that consists of a capacitor as well as a resistor. So, there are two important things that we essentially use RC circuits for. So, we can use RC circuits to charge capacitors and we can also use RC circuits to discharge capacitors. So, let's begin by discussing charging capacitors in RC circuits. And let's begin with the following open RC circuit. So, we have an open switch. We have a battery that creates a voltage difference. We have a resistor given by R and a capacitor given by C. Now, because this is an open circuit, that basically means no electrons will flow through our circuit and that implies that the charge on our capacitor will be neutral. The charge will be zero. Now, let's suppose we flip our switch so that now we have a closed RC circuit. When we flip that switch, charge begins to accumulate on this plate of our capacitor because now electrons begin to flow from the lower potential side of our battery to the higher potential side of the battery. So electrons flow in the following general direction. And as though electrons, as, as those electrons flow, those electrons begin to accumulate on this plate, pushing these electrons away. So now we have a separation of electric charge and a voltage difference will exist between these plates of our capacitor. So let's examine the following three important equations that we were able to derive in a previous lecture. So, we have equation number one, which essentially gives us Q, the quantity of charge that accumulates on our plate, on our capacitor, over some time given by T, which is given in seconds. So this equation gives us the quantity of electric charge that is collected on the capacitor over some time T during the charging process. So, Q is equal to C multiplied by E, where this is our electromotive force on the battery. The C is the quantity of capacitance on our capacitor. The T is the time in seconds. R is our resistance. And C is our capacitance. Now, let's move on to equation 2. So, the voltage across our capacitor with respect to time is given by the following following equation, which was also derived in the previous lecture. So this gives us the voltage across our capacitor during our charging process with respect to time. And finally, this third equation gives us the electric current that flows through our electric circuit with respect to time. So once again, this equation gives us the electric current in the electric circuit during the charging process with respect to time. So the electric current is equal to our electromotive force on the battery divided by the resistance of the resistor multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC. Now notice all these equations have the same exact RC term. In fact, we usually define RC in terms of the Greek letter tau. Now tau is simply known as the time constant and tau, the time constant, represents the time it takes or requires the capacitor to lose or gain 63% of our electric charge. So, let's move on to the following step in which we're essentially going to discuss the meaning of these two equations. Let's begin with equation number two. So, what exactly does equation number two tell us about our voltage on our capacitor with respect to time? So, we see that the voltage across the capacitor will eventually equal the voltage of the battery. So notice as time approaches infinity, as time becomes large, 
this term approaches zero. And as this term approaches zero, this term approaches zero and VC will eventually equal to our electromotive force. So that basically means when our capacitor is fully charged, the voltage across our capacitor is equal to the voltage across our battery. Now let's move on to equation number three. What important information can we obtain from equation three? So we see that at time equals zero, so at an initial time when our capacitor begins to charge, our e to the negative t divided by rc is equal to 1. So if this is 0, this becomes 1, and that implies if this is 1, then i is equal to our electromotive force divided by r, and this is simply equal to our initial current. So initially, the current is at a maximum. Now, as time increases, the current will decrease, and it will decrease exponentially, and when the time is infinity, when the time becomes very large, the electric current is zero. And that makes sense because when our capacitor is fully charged, the voltage across this capacitor is equal to the voltage across our battery. And because these two voltages are the same, there is no electric potential difference and charge will not flow. So that means our electric current will also not flow. Now, let's move on to discharging capacitors in RC circuits. Let's suppose we have a closed RC circuit and our capacitor is fully charged. So once we charge our capacitor, no more current flows as we see from this result. However, if we now take our battery and remove the battery from our electric circuit, the capacitor begins to discharge because now, once again, there is an electric potential difference within our electric circuit and charge begins to flow, electrons begin to flow from the lower potential of our capacitor to the higher potential of our capacitor in this general direction. So we have the following three important equations that essentially describe what happens to our charge, the voltage, and the current inside our electric circuit. So let's begin with equation one. So Q is equal to Q naught multiplied by E raised to the power of negative T divided by RC. So we define the time equals zero as the time right when we remove our voltage, uh, our battery from our electric circuit. So from this equation, we see that at time equals zero seconds, the Q is equal to Q naught because this term becomes one. So Q naught represents our initial, our maximum electric charge that, that is stored on our capacitor. Now, this equation also tells us that as the time increases, the capacitor loses charge exponentially. So that basically means when our time approaches infinity, the quantity of charge on our capacitor will approach zero. In other words, at an infinite time, our capacitor will be completely discharged. Now, let's move on to equation two. So equation two basically tells us how our voltage drops across our capacitor when it loses our charge. So the voltage C across our capacitor is equal to our initial voltage V0 multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC. So we see at time equals zero right when our capacitor begins to discharge, our voltage across our capacitor VC is equal to our initial voltage given by V0. Now as the time increases, we see that the capacitor's voltage drops exponentially. And finally, let's move on to equation three. So we see that our electric current in our electric circuit is equal to I initial multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC. So once again, at time of zero seconds, we see that the electric current within our electric circuit is at a maximum quantity given by I naught. 
Now, as the time increases, the current in our circuit drops exponentially just like our voltage and the electric charge does. Now, once again, this quantity RC in these cases represents our time constant. It represents the time it requires the capacitor to lose exactly 63% of our electric charge.